Hey everyone, uh, my name is Will Brunner and this is my trope presentation. I'm focusing on the gentle giant trope. Um, obviously the gentle giant is one of the more commonly used tropes um, in all of TV and media. Um, we see it in a really wide array of films like sci-fi, um, obviously King Kong, uh, Skull Island was one where it was used um, of mice and men. Lenny is a gentle giant uh, of Mice and Men. It's also a book. And then The Blind Side, uh, which is the true story about NFL player Michael Orr, is another great example uh, where he plays the gentle giant. Um, so, yeah, I thought this was a great topic to do the presentation on. So what is the, de or the gentle giant? Well, I mean, we usually... Uh, can tell when we see the gentle giant. Um, it's pretty easy. You can point them out from like literally anywhere. Um, Andre the Giant is one of the best examples of a gentle giant. Obviously, um, if you'd never watched the movie Princess Bride, his role in the Princess Bride is basically just as himself. He's just there to impose his massive stature. Uh, I think he stood at seven foot four, um, three hundred plus pounds. So. He was an absolute um, tank of a human being, if you will. Um, John Coffey is another good example from The Green Mile. Um, and I thought that he was probably the best example because um, I feel like this trope really features a lot of common misconceptions of specifically race and gender. Um, I think a lot of the time we see the gentle giant being played by an African-American man. Um, so... Usually the way um, they portray the gentle giant as well is um, to be scary looking because they're so big and muscular, um, but when people warm up to them, they end up realizing that the gentle giant is actually really just uh, timid and like a teddy bear. They're actually really nice and not hostile. Um, so the one thing though um, that people might forget about gentle giants is even though they're gentle giants I mean if you get them angry and you get on their bad side they are not gonna be gentle anymore they will really hurt whoever um, is coming after them and making them angry so how do we know when we see the gentle giant well like I said the gentle giant is most commonly a male character and oftentimes we see that they're kind of booked them, and rather street smart, obviously. Um, this is usually because the character is from low, maybe a lower income area, um, maybe doesn't have a uh, family, doesn't have friends, doesn't, they just lack resources, are gentle giants. So um, that's usually amplified by uh, the fact that the character has an absurdly deep voice, uh, looks very strong and physically imposing, and they're usually in a constant state of confusion. But they will act like a teddy bear, once again, to those who treat them well and treat them with respect. But if you get on their bad side, once again, uh, they will put you down brutally. So moving on to example number one, which is the blind side. Um, if you don't know this movie, it's about Michael Orr, um, who's a real person. He's a real NFL player. Um, he's now a Super Bowl champion. Um, it's about his childhood. He was orphaned as a kid. Um, his mother was addicted to crack cocaine, and his father was just always in and out of jail. And he ends up being adopted literally off the street by uh, this wealthy couple, Leanne and Sean Tui. And they end up uh, giving him a home, letting him move in with them. Um, they give him all the resources he could have possibly asked for. They pay for his tutor. Um, they get him football practice, they help him graduate, and it ends up turning into a full college football scholarship for him at the University of Ole Miss. So he becomes a star there, and he eventually gets drafted into the NFL. Um, that's his real life, um, but this is the clip from the movie. Borders 
are different. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh, Michael, no. Michael, I'm fine, SJ. Michael, go, go help SJ. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Michael, 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 Michael. Excuse me, man. Yes, baby. Do you think the blood will come out of my shirt? Yes, I think the blood will come out of your shirt. <laughs> Ma'am, an airbag deploys at 200 miles an hour. The sun is too small to be sitting in the front seat. But he is okay, right? <sighs> Busted lip, bruised face. Usually when someone inside can see where the airbag is, it's a fractured face, broken neck, maybe worse. It's like the airbag was coming for him and changed direction. It's probably defective or something like that, but your son's very, very lucky. No, I did. I called the insurance. It's fine. It's fine. I'll talk to you later. I gotta go. Bye. SJ's fine. He is. He's actually enjoying all the attention he's getting back there. Hey, Michael. Could have happened to anyone, all right? It's not your fault. How do you look at me? Michael, what happened to your arm? I stopped it. So, from this example, um, I think this is a really powerful point in the movie because it shows how gentle uh, Michael is. I mean, we see a lot of clips in the movie of him playing football and just running people over. But when it comes to his family, um, he's really, really protective, um, obviously. He sticks his arm in front of the airbag to stop it from hitting SJ, um, which probably saved his life. Um, and obviously, Michael doesn't care. He fractured his arm, and you know he's fine with it. He just uh, he just wanted to save his little brother. So that goes to show how much of a gentle giant he is. And then our second example is the Green Mile. If you've never seen the Green Mile, um, I highly recommend it. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Um, John Coffey is our gentle giant in the movie. Um, if you don't know about the movie, um, John Coffey is basically wrongfully accused of the rape and murder of two little girls, and he's sent to death row where he meets Tom Hanks, who's his prison guard. And little does Tom Hanks know, uh, John Coffey is actually not guilty, and he also has the power to heal people as well as show them things that he's seen. So, um, through being in the prison with them all the time, uh, they actually build this relationship up, and Tom Hanks learns to trust John Coffey, and he realizes that he actually is not guilty because at one point John Coffey takes his hand, and through his touch, Tom Hanks can see... Uh, everything that happened with the murder so he actually finds out who the real murderer is and realizes that John Coffey is actually just a good guy and he's like one of the most gentle people ever um, obviously the sad thing about this movie well the ending of the movie is terribly sad because he ends up being killed by electrocution um, John Coffey even though uh, they know that he is not guilty um, and I think that reinforces the trope because I think a, a common theme in, uh, in these movies, especially for the gentle giant is that they usually end up going out before the movie ends. Um, I feel like an awful lot of the time they end up uh, dying or having something very tragic happen in their lives. So, um, let's move on to the clip from the green mile. My name is Paul Edgecombe. If I'm not here, you can ask for Mr. Terwilliger, Mr. Howell, or Mr. Stanton, these gentlemen right there. Questions? Do you leave the light on after bedtime? Because I get a little scared in the dark sometimes. If it's a strange place. Stays. Pretty bright, around here all night long. We always keep a few lights burning out in the corridor. The corridor? Right out there.
So, um, obviously from this clip, we can see how much of a gentle giant John Coffey really is. Um, the main thing that points that out to us is the fact that, I mean, he's actually, uh, he's on death row for the rape and murder of two little girls. But if he's afraid of the dark, uh, which is what John or Tom Hanks just realizes, there's no way he could have actually done that and murdered those two little girls. So, um, this is a big point in the movie. Um, obviously, this is the first time we meet him, so we're able to tell right off of uh, right off the first impression that we have of him that there's really no way that he's the killer. He's just way too much of a, a sweetheart and a, a gentle giant to be able to do that, even though he looks physically imposing. So, uh, going to conclude, um, I think this trope, is obviously still really prevalent in modern day media and um i think that we should probably ease off of it a little bit it kind of uh, carries some negative misconceptions of race and gender um along with it and i think that it's not good to be so popularized because it does give an altered perception of what people think about certain races and gender so um I think that, uh, you know, more media challenging these stereotypes and challenging the, the gentle giant trope is something that would be uh, be cool and something that would help audiences around the world just gain a better stand or understanding um, of what they're actually seeing and just be able to take in a little bit more content. Um, so, yeah, that's my trope presentation. Thank you for watching. <laughs>